Hello everyone, welcome back to part 11. First up, you're going to want to grab your gizmo and select Polycube from the gear menu, scale it down and press delete loops. We're going to mask out some points to position them, then unmask the face to extrude it out with the gizmo. Let's insert three edge loops and switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush to better match them with the reference. Snap to the top view and use the gizmo to position the unmasked points. This next piece has a complex shape, but don't worry, we'll break the model visually into three parts. The middle part is angled upwards, and then there's the right and left sides. Just mentally breaking down models into smaller sections can help you stay focused and not feel overwhelmed. With the Z Modeler brush, select Delete a single poly. We're going to get rid of these bottom faces and the ones on the inside. Let's mask the model and select Polycube from the Gizmos gear. We'll use this to model the middle section. Split unmasked points and press delete loops. Then we can adjust its scale and position. Let's go ahead and delete the polys except the one on the top. Switch to extrude for the edge action and edge for the target. After the extrusion, we can align the face better with the gizmo. Unmask the edge and from the front view, Move that edge down a bit. Now we can add in three edge loops using insert multiple edge loops. Let's go ahead and unmask the edges and position them. Next, insert four edge loops and reposition the edges using the slide edge action in the Z Modeler brush. Add another edge loop at the top and adjust the points. Delete the two polys and unmask the middle edge loop. Let's go ahead and move it up a bit with the gizmo, then clear the mask. Collapse the edges and merge the subtool down. Add a few more edge loops. and then extrude the edges to connect both pieces. Let's use the move brush to adjust the point to help with the curve. Switch to the Move Infinite Depth Brush and make a few more point adjustments. Let's move them little by little until they start looking right.
unmask the bottom edges and from the top view, move them out a bit. Extrude this single edge and taper it in. Press Ctrl W to group visible. All right, let's continue on. We're gonna start by selecting move for the point action and by brush radius for the target. We'll reposition these points to better match the reference. Next, we'll add an edge loop right down the center using insert multiple edge loops. Switch to extrude for the edge action and edge slash edge loop for the target. Let's switch to insert now, but this time pick single edge loop. Here's a real quick tip. If you press alt, it will delete the edge loop. However, if you press shift, it will maintain a constant width to the nearest parallel edge. Let's go ahead and select split for the point action, point for the target, and triangle center for the modifier. We'll split the same point twice, and on the second time, Tap Alt to change the polygroup. Delete the center polygroup and then press Ctrl W to group visible. Unmask the edges on the other side and reposition them with the gizmo. Let's take a few moments to adjust the edges before we move on. Now let's extrude the edges, unmask them, then scale and position them with the gizmo. Clear the mask and extrude another edge. Unmask the bottom point, and to ensure the gizmo aligns with the object, alt-click on the mesh. Insert a few edge loops and continue to adjust the shape. Now we can select delete a single poly and alt tag the three faces. Select transpose a single poly and alt tag the four faces. Go ahead and move them in with the gizmo. Unmask those two edges and move them out. Do some final adjustments and press Ctrl W to make it a single polygroup. Next, let's straighten up these edges. Select Crease for the edge action and Edge Loop Partial for the target. We want to set up our creases before we extrude. Switch to extrude all polygons and after extruding it, press flip. Press crease PG and turn on dynamic. Now we can set the smooth subdivision to 4 and the crease level to 3. We're almost there. Let's do a few more crease adjustments though.
Select transpose a single poly from the Z Muller brush and alt tag the eight faces to move down. Now we can press Ctrl W to group visible. Add three edge loops down each side of the poly loop using insert multiple edge loops. This way, when we delete the two edge loops on each side, the remaining edge loop will be even on both sides. Let's select slice mesh for the edge and point action. After slicing the top, press the spacebar to reset and then continue slicing on the bottom. Once that's done, clean up the geometry by deleting the leftover edges. Let's go ahead and collapse the four edges as well. Alt tag the eight faces with transpose a single poly and then move them up slightly with the gizmo. Lastly, select slide edge loop complete and add a slight bevel to the hole. Now it's time to dive into the front fairing. Let's pull up the gizmo and from the gear, choose the polyplane. We want to ensure the plane doesn't have any edge loops and it consists of a single poly. Using the Z Muller brush, select move for the point action and by brush radius for the target. We're gonna add in a single edge loop and for the edge action, choose extrude and edge edge loop for the target. After adding in a single edge loop, let's adjust a few points. Let's go ahead and choose slice mesh for the edge and point actions. And then transpose that edge. Mask the internal point and move the outer point with the gizmo. Now let's add in more edge loops to the mesh, trying to keep them as evenly spaced as possible. For this edge loop, we're aiming to align it with the creased edge running vertically. So with edge loops and triangle faces, they will follow the edge attached to the triangle point if you start near that point. However, if you start away from the triangle point, it'll be straight. Essentially, it will try to follow the points and edges that are closest when it's first placed. To merge points with the Z Muller brush, just move the points really close to the points you want to merge them with, and it will auto weld. Unmask the outer edges and move them down a little bit with the gizmo.
Let's extrude the top edges. Collapse the two first edges and adjust the points with the slide action. Unmask the edges and move them with the gizmo. Let's extrude all polygons and then press flip. Press QC50 and then select crease for the edge action and edge loop partial for the target. Then set the crease level to 2. Make a couple more crease adjustments and give it a few spins around to make sure everything's shaping up nicely. Going back to our main tool, we can see our progress. So far we've made one side of the fairing which needs to be instanced over to the other side. Make sure X is selected and click Instance from Ryan's Tools. Instance basically uses Array Mesh to mirror the subtool over to the selected axis. We'll now turn on our reference to double check the proportions and placement. After turning on and off the eye icon a few times, it seems like we're lining up pretty well. 